Hello everyone and welcome to Metro TV. I'm your host Andy Hoig, publisher and CEO of Metro Magazine. We have a special episode today um, talking with organizations, nonprofits, and businesses about how they're being impacted and also dealing with the coronavirus. So um, don't go away. We will be right back. Well, I'm here with Mike Whaling. He is the executive director of the Stevens Center here in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, Mike, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure to be on. Yeah, in, in, a, in, a, in a very interesting time for so many nonprofits. So I first just want to talk about the mission of the Stevens Center and, and what, you know, who do you serve? What is the purpose um, and your mission? Um, absolutely. Um, our, our mission does a really good job of stating our purpose, which is uh, we partner with the community, families, and individuals to overcome homelessness, addiction, and poverty. Um, at the Stevens Center, we have a emergency shelter. We have addiction recovery program called the Hero Program. And then we also have permanent supportive housing options for those individuals that take a little bit longer to get to the root cause that led them to um, either addiction and or homelessness. Yeah. And kind of right now, I mean, with everything going on in the world, I feel like, I mean, and I want you to speak to this, that's even kind of more of a challenge for people because, you know, we're all staying at home. These people don't necessarily have homes. They, they come to your facility or, and, and I mean, you're there kind of on the front lines for these people. We are, we are. Uh, Stephen Center is the place for change. Um, when individuals and families are looking for permanent housing, uh, this is generally their last stop. Um, for instance, during the COVID outbreak for the last month, uh, we've had 61 individuals leave our, our shelter and 33 of them moved into permanent housing. Um, to put that in perspective, uh, um, in our, in our community, um, the emergency shelters move a little bit, you know, depending on the month, but right around 5% of their individuals move to permanent housing. So okay. the fact that we're over 50% um, really it's just says a lot about our, our mission and that we dedicate all of our resources to mental health and addiction. Um, uh, the reality is, is um, addiction and mental, mental health come t together. And, uh, yeah. And we address both. Um, and um, really what makes us unique and special here at the Stevens Center is that individuals who come into our shelter are prioritized into our HERO program and they don't have to pay. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a free service. Um, we know that coming into an emergency shelter uh, takes, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's not always the easiest thing. Um, but it does sure. prioritize you on the waiting list and it does um, and it does allow you to attend for free. Um, Are you, I mean, let me ask you this. So again, COVID-19 really kind of, I think, hit our community the second week in March. I mean, is when, when things kind of started getting, you know, there was a focus on it and then things started to get weird and then everybody you know and then over the a, a period of time things started shutting down so are you finding do you have like are you are there more people coming to you or are there less people coming to you um i want to i'll ask that question first because then i want to ask how the community can help you i mean that's the big question at the end of the day absolutely um you know when when uh when when the virus hit it was uh the second week of, of march um we had a community training um, here at the Stevens Center where, you know, anywhere from 100 to 200 individuals come in. It's trauma-informed care training that match our continuum of care for the homeless here in the metro area is putting on. And we happen to be a site for two of the trainings. Um, that week on Tuesday, um, I called them and said, uh, no longer you know, is Stevens Center going to be able to be that host site because of, of, of the COVID virus. 
And this was Tuesday of that week, and I don't have the exact date, but it was early in March. It was Tuesday. It was because the third, the thirteenth was a Friday, so that was like the tenth of March when that. So, happened. Yeah. So on Tuesday, I I, uh, I I canceled our community trainings. One of our one of our other shelters uh, picked up uh, picked up the slack, so to speak, and they said that they would they would host it. And to be honest, on Tuesday, I was like, maybe I'm jumping the gun, you know, and and I, yeah. and I, I felt like maybe I, well, just that, I was jumping the gun. By Wednesday night, the NBA had shut down the season during a basketball game. And by Thursday morning, I got to tell you, um, schools were starting to cancel and I felt like a genius. So yeah. on Tuesday, you know, I, I thought I'm, I'm treading on thin ice here. And by yeah. Thursday, I felt like, uh, you know, like, like one of the smart guys, um, things are, things are changing quick with this, uh, COVID virus and, uh, right. um, and we're learning as, as, as we're going, I will tell you that media like this has been, um, fantastic for the shelters and for the Douglas County health department and all of our other partners, um, in dealing with the virus. Yeah. Uh, so how can, how can the community help you? I mean, how can, me as an individual, what do you need from me or, or from the community? Um, our biggest issue right now, and, I, and I'm sure this would be echoed by my fellow executive directors, but our biggest issue is that we are missing our volunteers. Um, at the Stevens Center, we have over 5,000 vol volunteer hours a month. Mm -hmm. and so that's like losing seven full-time equivalent employees. Um, sure. Now our, our volunteers, they do everything from, from cooking and serving meals, but more importantly, they, they back up our guest services. They provide, um, you know, um, they meet with our, with our, with our individuals and provide a, I don't know, uh, um, uh, hope if you, if right. you, will. um, they talk with individuals and individuals talk about their hopes and dreams and what they're doing with their case managers. And sometimes the relationship that you have with the, you know, with a volunteer that comes in two, three days a week, um, can can help you get off into the right direction or help you, you know, um, uh, move forward. Absolutely. So my question to you too, so if you can't have those volunteers coming in to, you know, the physical location, what can we do for you? I mean, when right now we're, you know, we're not supposed to, you know, we're supposed to not leave our homes, which, um, how can we help you? Can we write letters? Can we bring food? Can we sponsor something? How can we help you? Um, <laughs> all of those things. I was going to say, uh, the first thing you probably do is, uh, is like Steven Center. Uh, we, we do a good job on uh, social media and we, we put out updates on Facebook on that and what our current needs are. Okay. You have a donation center in the back of Steven Center. We're still taking do donations. Donations, of course, are, are down as we encourage people not to go out shopping for us and things like that. Um, um, so you want, I mean, cash is like, cash is king right now. I mean, people can shop can. till the cows come home, but um, you know what you need. So we can go buy you food and toilet paper and whatnot, but actually you're able to take those, that, that monetary money and put it into where you need it to go. That is, that is absolutely correct. Um, for the for the food, the personal hygiene items that are that are so readily you know don donated on a regular basis, and then our our, our household items and, and furniture. Um, as I stated, we had 31 individuals that moved out. All of these individuals need household items. They need furniture. Um, so these are the type of uh, of, of items that, that we become uh, that become scarce. Um, yeah. Now you're right. Cash is king, and we're asking for do donations and and to share our Facebook posts or anything else that we are putting out. Uh, um, I know that we have some letters coming out from our marketing departments, kind of telling our funders and our stakeholders what we're doing and what we're going to do uh, once we do have a positive case. Uh, so far, all of our quarantined individuals have come back negative, okay. which is a blessing. But yes. we know that. Our time is coming. Um, yeah. Um, but I think um, my most important message is, um, you know, we have over a we have over a thousand volunteers, and um, 
and I know that that they all want to help. Um, you know, we've had some volunteers actually uh, apply for jobs that we have temporary jobs, and they want to help so much. They're like, we're even willing to get paid to <laughs> help you guys. Um, yeah. Which is kind of a funny uh, story in and of itself. But um, uh, most importantly, though, uh, when it is safe, um, yeah, we need our volunteers to come back. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you know, the uh, all of the churches and the community groups that prepare the meals, and and many of them actually serve the meals. Um, you know, that's, that's a really special part of what we do here at the Stevens Center, and it it makes connections between the community and our and our individuals. Um, and um and you know that's the piece that uh the more time that's gone you know you're you're just uh nervous that uh you know will everyone come back yeah well i have a feeling 90 percent will come back if not 95 if not all because again mike what you're doing is so important for the community and i just want you know again to have this conversation with you it's we're in a weird interesting time and life doesn't stop for any of us including the people you serve and and your volunteers as well so i just want to kind of create this media this outlet this messaging outlet i would say for you to you know reach out to the community let us know what you need again following you on following the stevens center on facebook um that's a great way to find out what's kind of happening on a day-to-day -day basis and what you need is am i hearing that correctly that is that is correct and uh you know for instance if we had, and i i mentioned the, the move outs um yeah. with our donation center for instance if we if we had a move out this weekend you know we would put those items up on the up on the um on facebook of what we're looking for okay um sometimes the families even even do do their own posts so it's it, it's kind of a neat thing when you're actually yeah. somebody that you can feel in touch. You're not just giving it to a to a, a nonprofit and hoping that it helps somebody. You can actually see who it's going to help. So it's yeah. uh, kind of a neat neat project they put together. Absolutely. So I would love to come back and wrap back around with you, like in May, potentially middle of May, because um, hopefully things are a little bit different and we can we're having more contact with people if it's safe out there, um, and then kind of find out what we can do for you as well. So. I would love that, and I love your timing. It's very optimistic, I feel, but I, I, I hope it comes to fruition. <laughs> yes, it, you know what? It's all good. Every, you know, we're going to move forward as a community and as a as a humanity on the globe. We're going to move move forward. So people can go to your website, or let's say website first is um, www.stevenscenter all one word dot org. Okay, and then obviously find you on Facebook because social media is a great way right now to just keep up to date with what people are knowing so or what they, you know what your needs are all right Bye. thank you so thank much, you so much. yep i appreciate you coming on the show thanks yep thank you bye Hello, everybody, and welcome, my friends. Um, I'm so happy to have with me today Jill Orton. She is the CEO of Kansas, Nebraska, and Iowa um, region of the American Run Cross. So, oh my gosh, Jill, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me, Andy. And you're you're cover. I mean, you cover a big region, and I mean, right now with everything with COVID nineteen, um, yeah, I just want to talk about you know some of the things that are going on in your you know, with your organization and how the community um, 
is reaching out to you and how we can help you. Um, so yeah, let, let's just talk about that for a minute. Well, let's dive in yeah, and yeah. talk about, you know, yeah. COVID being the biggest disaster yeah. that the Red Cross or anyone has seen. And knowing Red Cross, we respond to disasters. But how does this look? This is different. And we're used to doing disasters that are flooding or tornado related, which those may still come. And we can talk about that a little bit. And I just wanted to say, I mean, we were talking at this time last year with all the flooding coming on. And this is like a completely different scenario. So yeah. So continue on. Didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. No, it's a great way to transition because now for the Red Cross, this is looking at the other component of what we do in our life-saving services, and that is providing a stable blood supply to our nation, 40% of our blood supply. And when this occurred, you know, everybody rightfully so was scared and our sponsors were like how should we do this is this safe the questions started coming up and so with that we partnered with our um elected officials to get the word out that it is safe that the fda and the um health and human services all put out statements to say we need healthy individuals to continue to donate blood so that we can continue to meet the needs of our hospitals because blood is a perishable, um, non-replicable, you can't make it yet, you know, so we need to be able to have people donate. Yeah, so I mean, so how do you create a safe environment for people to donate? I mean, what does that mean? Because that's a lot of the questions that, that I'm kind of seeing on Facebook because people are wanting to contribute, but let's yeah let's talk about that for a minute absolutely and being a part of the nation's um blood banking business we're all regulated we all have precautions in place during normal time so that's good but how do you take it to the next level so we've been partnering with the cdc to really take what's the latest what's the greatest what are the recommendations so i will share just even as a red cross employee but our phlebotomists that come and actually are on the front line take the blood so just as me, they need to follow the same regulations of take temperature before you leave your house to make sure you're within the range. Make sure that when you get to work, you take the temperature again. So it's that double check. You go through the single entry point into a facility for safety of all. Then what you do is you have to wash your hands. Then you make sure you put on your protective gear, which includes gloves, which are changed um, frequently in between each and every donation, if not more, uh, making sure we all, and I have my own mask. I love your mask. Yeah. Yes, I thank my mother for that. She made yeah. it for me. Um, but you know what, knowing then we also have our safety protocols for wiping down extra all our surfaces, making sure that every single um, donation is um, our beds are six feet apart for social distancing. So it is taking it to the next level, but it's also individuals making sure they feel safe. And in order to do that, they control, we control each of our own where we donate. So we really want people to make appointments because that is the best way to control the flow, know where we're going. We can then make sure that we can schedule to make sure that there's room, the right a number of people there and have all the products we need. Because we'll also provide, if people don't have their own masks, we asked our donors to wear masks as well. So okay. we're just taking it to the yeah. next level. And so, so how can people, where do they know where to go? How do they know where, you know, in their communities where to go? The best way I will share with you is online through your handy dandy smartphone yeah. is to go to your app store and type in Red Cross Blood. There's an amazing app that you can then go in. You can search by zip code and you okay. can put in and see what's available today tomorrow or in two weeks or in a month so it really provides a lot of opportunity what works best for the individual and what's available in any community across the united states yeah yeah so and let me ask you this um so are you seeing i mean right now i don't want to put words in your mouth so you're needing more blood donations, correct? I mean, you're probably always needing more blood. Yeah, I think you nailed regardless. it right there. We yeah, need regardless. a sustainable yeah. blood supply day in and day out. 
right now, so yesterday we heard the governor say, we're gonna go back to elected surgeries. So that means that the inventory in our hospitals yeah. will need to increase again. So that means that we'll need a significant amount of donors each and every day to meet the need of our hospitals. Yeah. As a whole blood donor, you can donate every 56 days, but I will share with you, we also need plasma donors and plasma donors has a shelf life of five days. So again, mm -hmm. learning what is best that you could donate as an individual. I'm a whole blood donor. So every 56 days, I try to make that commitment of that life-saving gift. One donation say it can save up to three lives. Yeah, and so, so what's the difference between whole blood and, and plasma? I mean, I, I kind of know it, but... So let's put it in. So right now, everyone's probably hearing about convalescent plasma because that is the um, potential life-saving um, treatment for okay. um, COVID. And it's one of the partnerships the Red Cross has made with the FDA to actually screen for donors. You have to be, have had COVID, completely okay. recover, and yeah. then be willing to um, donate blood, um, meet okay. all the criteria to donate blood. And then what happens is then we search for the antibodies that then the hospitals use to go back to the um, critically ill patients. So it's just by donating plasma, plasma is a different component of the blood that yeah. is used in order to do different treatments. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's so many different layers and Oh my gosh, I just so appreciate you and everybody. I mean, first of all, in our community, the Omaha community, but again, across the the nation and honestly, across the globe right now. Because like you said, when we started, is this is something that's so unprecedented that it's just, it's never, we're, we're, we're walking in a territory that we have not walked before. And I know that people- That is so true. People are wanting to contribute. You know, if you think yeah. about then traditionally Red Cross, so you know us from the tornadoes, from the floods, as we've talked about before, yeah. but day to day, at least once every other day in the Omaha metro area, we, we're still responding to fires, home fires, yeah. whether yeah. they're multifamily fires in an apartment or they're a single family fire. That affects um, individual families. And now on top of does everyone have a job? Do you know what your income look like? How do you know what are you saving? Um, that's scary. And so what we do is we go in virtually and have phone calls or meetings such as this yeah, over Zoom yeah. or Skype, and we do casework this way. And so we're educating our um, responders in a new and different way. How are we going to do this? And then if it's a big disaster where, you know, a year ago we set up 30 congregate shelters, probably not going to do that in this environment now. What does that right. look like in each community? So are we going to more than likely put people up in hotels? That's going to be a little bit different, cost a little more money for us. And then we work on, then we go yeah. tell that story to our donors and we work through that. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's kind of going to bring me to the last question too. So we've got the blood donation, which is so important. We talked about the plasma, but just overall, I mean, you're still operating. I mean, we you are. Have, like you said, you're just, you have all these other, I mean, there's, whether there's fires or somebody, you know, has an accident. I mean, it's just regardless the Red Cross is there for so many different reasons. So how can people find out more about, first about COVID-19, but then also about all these other things that, because you need support now and year round and we'll continue to do that, so. Thanks for asking. We have an amazing website through redcross.org. Um, we have a whole section on COVID and how the community can help particularly about the pla the convalescent plasma seems right now the big piece that people are interested in and how that screening process works and how to sign up for it. But it talks about, you know, in our environment, what the Red Cross is doing every day. I will tell our metro community, do make a blood donation. Um, it is safe. It, it will save lives. And you can plan out as long, uh, way into, we're looking even into the summer. Be thinking about that. Yeah. Um, if you're scared about it, talk. I'd be happy to talk to someone about it. Our board members would be happy to talk to someone about it. It is an important part of what we do. Um, the next piece, I mentioned board members, um, we're always looking for volunteers. Um, even in a virtual setting, 
I'm yeah. personally right now recruiting board members, leadership volunteers, disaster volunteers. So that's a great piece if anybody's interested. Um, and then last but not least, um, we balance mission and margin as um, we need to do. And so you got to have the money to pay for the mission. You got to have the mission to raise the money. So it's totally yeah. free. So thanks yeah. for letting me do that. Well, absolutely. So again, people can go to the website yes. is Red Cross or America. Oh, red, Redcross.org, O-R-G. Okay. And then is there a way, is that, I mean, cause I know it's, it's a huge, you know, you guys cover so much uh, good they want question. To be Nebraska specific. Yep. And you can just type in your zip code and you're okay. going to come Perfect. to right locally where the presence is. And that could be, you know, wherever you live, that'll connect you to the yeah. local. Youth. Yeah. Jill, thank you so much. And I encourage everybody watching this to go to the website look at how you can contribute. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, you, you can really feel the community coming together right now and people are wanting to know what to do. Um, and again, this is, you know, far years and years and decades beyond this. I mean, the Red Cross is gonna be there for so many people, but, but I know people are really wanting to know what can I do now or in the year to come. So, so thank you so much for the thank interview. You me yeah you're welcome and folks i will see you later on next week's metro tv Thank you everyone for joining me today. You can find out more about Metro Magazine and so many wonderful nonprofits. Go to spiritofomaha.com and please follow us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, um, Metro Magazine, all one word. Um, we'll be posting a lot of information there as well. Uh, thank you and we will see you back here next week. Mm -hmm.